It's fall and therefore it's spooky season. Time for pumpkins everywhere. Time for bugs and plants to have their last hurrah. Time for kale to decide it's no longer too hot to be alive. Time for a cup of hot tea. Time for witchy accessories. And time for fall sewing. After fitting help from good friends, of course. Join me as I talk about how I made this Gunny Sacks inspired whimsical witch goth butterfly dress, which I originally thought would just be a mock-up, but turned out to be a cute, cool weather dress that I absolutely love. Hi everyone, I'm Carrie, or J Night Sews. This video is about my blue butterfly dress, which I'm calling a whimsical witch dress. So this is a, a post-mortem or what I did after the fact instead of a watch me sew this gown kind of a video because there were a lot of things going on when I was making this dress. For one, we were actually redoing the floors in this room and painting the walls. So all of my sewing stuff was crammed in different places while we were doing this. And also after that was finished or almost finished, it's still not quite finished. My husband contracted a breakthrough case of COVID and it really just did not feel right to film myself while making what I figured was going to end up being an absolute disaster of a dress. And therefore I just decided to make the dress. I did that in part to keep myself from going crazy and losing my schist. And I'm only making this video now because I actually ended up liking the dress. This fabric is from Ikea and once again, it is a queen size duvet cover, the Berg Corel. I have no idea how to actually pronounce that. The duvet cover, I don't think is actually sold by Ikea anymore. I found this in the as is section when I went there with my friend Erin and it was $7.50. And originally I thought, no, I don't need this. I, I don't like large printed patterns. I never wear them. But at the same time, it was $7.50, it's 100% cotton, and it's a very nice cotton. But this cotton is, I believe, it was originally sewn in Pakistan. Who knows where the actual cotton came from? I do know that India produces cotton, Pakistan possibly does, which means that this cotton traveled at least from Pakistan to St. Louis, and then where I bought it, and then I brought it home to Indiana which means it traveled quite a bit and definitely used up more than $7.50 worth of energy resources <laughs> during that time. Also, I have no idea how much the people who harvested the cotton and then made it into fabric and then actually sewed it into the duvet cover made, but uh, hopefully it was more than $7.50, you know? So me paying that amount, does, it doesn't feel like it's enough. <laughs> Although at the time, of course, I was thrilled to be getting what is essentially uh, nine, over nine yards, like nine and a half yards of 43 inch wide fabric or about four and a half yards of 86 inch wide fabric, depending on which way you want to look at it, for just $7.50. Um, obviously that's super cheap and it's pretty and it's a great deal. But is it really environmentally and socially is it a good deal no no so i wanted to turn it into something that i would wear and get a lot of use out of in part to assuage my own guilt <laughs> assage what is that word assuage assage my own guilt anyway i decided i wanted to try to turn it into a gunny sack style dress and the gunny sacks dresses were originally from the 1970s and the 1980s. That's when they were popular and that's when they were actually made. But they were made to emulate the Renaissance styles and, and sort of medieval styles 
of yore. So they were already kind of history bounding and now it's like vintage history bounding. And now here I am making gowns that are emulating the, the history bounding of the 1970s and the 1980s. The new fad for these gowns took off within the last maybe five or six years, maybe the last decade. And I think this goes along with the whole cottage core theme and an aesthetic fad phenomenon uh, that's been going on. These are cute dresses. They are supposedly very comfortable. This one is very comfortable to scamper around in nature and you know, to go to tea, whatever, to have a picnic outside. So it fits with what's going on today in 2021. Now to make this gown, I used what's called Franken patterning. Franken patterning from Frankenstein who took these body parts from different dead people and put them together to create a being that eventually became Frankenstein's monster. Only here, what I'm creating is not necessarily monstrous, but rather sort of whimsically witchy, or at least that is my hope. I'm participating in the costume collaboration called Whimsical Witches, which is inspired by some art that you can find on Instagram and also just the desire to do something kind of witchy during spooky season. October. Yay! It's fall! And butterflies may not scream witchy to you, however, I am of the opinion that witches can be every day and you can have all sorts of witches. Whimsical witches are not necessarily the, the creepy, the evil, the spooky, stereotypical witches like um, the Wicked Witch from The Wizard of Oz. Instead, whimsical witches, it's like a cottagecore version of witches. Cottagecore, you think nature, pretty or frilly, or could go to a picnic, could go to a tea party kind of witch. That's what I'm going for for here. And I also wanted to make a dress that I could actually wear to work to teach geology. And so that's where this dress comes from. But back to Franken patterning, the two patterns that I used are both McCall's patterns. And the first pattern that I used for the bodice is McCall's 8239. And I specifically used view A, the bodice from view A, the long sleeves, Couple of things I didn't do that you can see right away. I did not put on a collar and I did not end up needing any closures. So then the neckline is high enough and this doesn't go down deep enough to where I actually need closures. So if you follow the pattern instructions, it says you don't need a lining. However, when I try to finish the seams, so on the inside, originally what I did was I surged all of the pieces. That surging was too bulky when it goes around the curve of the bust and it just looked really awkward there. So I decided I needed to actually trim the seam allowance and I was going to try to zigzag stitch it, but instead I, I just gave up and decided I wanted to use a lining. So I ended up using a lining. I still use the facing that the instructions say to use along the, the neckline and the opening here. And I use fusible interfacing for the first time and left the collar off completely. I also did some finishing stitches along the neckline in order to keep the lining and the, uh, the facing in place to keep things from turning out. I also used the, the same sleeve pattern. So the sleeve pattern that is in McCall's 8329 for view A with the long sleeves and the cuff, hey, I, I followed that pattern pretty much exactly. My friends, Christine or Sosine and Erin or Gracie's Fancy on Instagram, both helped me to fit this bodice pattern. If I look at the actual sizes um, in the chart, it looks like I'm a size 14 according to my waist measurement. However, these patterns have a ton of ease and the size 14 for my bust and for the length of my bust, completely wrong, <laughs> way too big. So there had to be a lot of adjusting 
um, during that process. And I'm so thankful to those ladies for helping me to get something at least a little bit more fitted. Not skin tight like I would want with some historical costumes, like 18th century costumes. However, a little bit more fitted than what you would get if you just straight sewed from the pattern. So the bodice turned out a lot better than I thought it would after the, the fitting and after using a, a lining. I also kept the zipper along the left side, like it says to do in the pattern. However, that's not where the zipper is supposed to be. The other pattern that I used in my little Franken patterning process here for the skirt. So if you look at the skirt in 8329, you can see it's pretty fitted. It doesn't flare at the hip and I wanted flare at the hips. I'm pretty straight and so to, to give the illusion that I actually have more shape than I do, I would prefer um, gathering or you know a lot of flare here at the waistline. And so for the skirt portion of, of the gown, I used McCall's 7086, a retro pattern from the 1960s. I think view A, if you look at view A, it has that very nice flared skirt. And that is what I was looking for. I just used pattern size 14. It doesn't matter as much for the skirt because it's gathered, it's not fitted. And I cut out those panels, which used up a huge chunk of the duvet cover. And I was pretty proud of myself. And then I read the directions and it said, you need a skirt lining. I thought, why? <laughs> Why do I need a skirt lining? Well, it's probably to help it keep its shape a little bit more. If you have a flimsy, lightweight fabric, then it, it's not actually gonna flare out very much. So you need a lining. And then I decided that after I made the lining for the bodice, again, out of that same duvet cover, that I would just make the lining out of the same duvet cover. So after I sewed these skirt pieces together and surged those seam lines, I just went ahead and kept surging. <laughs> and I surged the bottom of the skirts too, instead of actually hemming them, which was lazy of me. And I might go back and eventually, I won't go back, I probably won't go back. But I could just, just hem these like you are supposed to. The skirt pattern or the dress has a zipper at, I need to put this on a rolly thing, has a zipper at the back but I wanted my zipper at the left side where it is in the other pattern. And it's a very simple process to just in sew the skirt panels together at the front and the back and then leave the sides for the pockets, which are not included in either pattern, which is terrible, and then the zipper. So on the right side, on the right side, I put in a pocket. And I used the same method that I did in my Ponyo video for that pocket, but I wanted a pocket to put my phone in. And then on the other side, this is where the zipper is located. I did not do a perfect job. This is my actually my first zipper that I have ever put in anything. I did not have super high expectations. I actually did not have super high expectations for any of this, but I put in an invisible zipper, which is not quite invisible right at the waistline, but you know what? That's okay. I don't care. It kind of blends in and it's my first zipper so I'm gonna give myself some compassion and it's fine. And it actually unzips and zips and that is what is important people when you're putting in a zipper. And then the ruffle itself is one and a half times the circumference perimeter of the skirt hem. It's not two to one, and I think I would have preferred two to one, but I was working with what I had left. I had this one chunk that was up next to the original serging on the duvet cover itself. that was about 18 to 19 inches wide as you go across. So I took that 18 inches and I cut the long strip, and then I cut that in half lengthwise so that I had these two very long, essentially nine inch wide, strips, you have enough of a ruffle to create a nice little flare at the bottom. And that's pretty much what I did to make this dress. It's a dark butterfly print instead of a, the usual butterfly prints that are bright and, and cheerful. It's kind of like summer's ending, fall is coming, death is coming for the butterflies. That just swirled around in my head as something you could turn into a whimsical witch costume. 
Now I do have a witch's hat that I made last October for my Regency witch costume. It's a plain black hat made with extremely aggravating silk twill, a perfect base for, you know, pretty much whatever you want to do. And so I just stuck some blue flowers that my friend Christine sent me. She sent me like a box of flowers and I've been doing my darndest to try to use them in things and I thought, what the heck am I gonna use these large bluish purple flowers for? And voila, as part of my whimsical witch costume. This gown is most certainly only appropriate for cooler weather. We're talking maximum 70 degrees, anything warmer than that, and I'm gonna start sweating and, be, and feeling gross. This is not a summer dress, which the butterflies, you know, if they were bright and pretty and cheerful, would imply. Instead, we've got our kind of dark, moody butterflies, and I think that's more appropriate for fall and the cooler months. And you know what? I'm probably gonna wear this thing in the wintertime and I don't care <laughs> if there are no butterflies in the wintertime. However, if climate change continues, we might see butterflies and other insect insects we don't expect later in the year, which would be very, very disturbing. But as I was outside and lounging around in the grass and running around, uh, a bunch of gnats came over to visit, or at least I thought they were a cloud of gnats. Turns out they were mosquitoes. I was horrified and I went inside and did not get any more footage out in the backyard. I really do need to wait until it's cool enough so that the bugs are dead, 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 and then I'll go outside in this dress again. But in the meantime, I can certainly wear it to work and teach geology in it and occasionally just twirl about. This photo shoot or filming session is also the first time I've worn my American Duchess Balmorales, these little Victorian boots, it's been two years since I bought them, and I feel really stupid now because these are the most comfortable shoes that I have bought from American Duchess, and I can't believe that I haven't been wearing them like every day. They're the perfect little witchy shoes, look at them. And I love the way that they look with this dress. I could also wear the dress with leggings and my um, Airwalks or my Converse shoes, you know? I think that would also look cute, so. It's a versatile dress. You can be a witch, you could be a geology teacher, or you can just go grocery shopping or whatever. Uh, if you do go out in public though, please wear a mask and I hope that you are all vaccinated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you want to see more costuming videos, sewing videos, or Jane Austen videos. I have a couple of videos coming up. One of them is on making an actual gunny sack style dress that looks more gunny sacks and that one will have actual footage of me actually sewing. And I also have a video on my Loki variant cosplay, during which I make a uh, Loki helmet for my alligator, Delilah. And if you are unfamiliar with Delilah, I encourage you to watch my video on how I made her. And I also have a video on Jane Austen era marriage and divorce. So things to look forward to if you subscribe. Thanks, have a great day. Um, would you mind facing the camera and then like turning yourself on your face? Yeah, that's fine. It's not even my channel. This is like such a habit of mine. <laughs> so I'm gonna take. We're all gonna grow, Carrie. <laughs> Groping, Carrie. I wanna join. No.